Welcome to Second Tech, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. China's role in Africa's industrialization was discussed at a recent conference on China-Africa industrial cooperation. Rebecca Campbell joins us to discuss the highlights of the conference. Hi, Rebecca. One of the key topics of discussion was the need for Africa to attract more foreign investments. Indeed, yes. This was a very striking part of the conference was the clarity uh, and firmness with which the Chinese participants uh, emphasized this. Now, I'm thinking specifically of senior Chinese government officials, ambassadors, uh, who made it clear that f attracting foreign investment will be absolutely crucial to achieving industrialization in Africa. Now, anyone with even a slight uh, knowledge of economic history is aware of this fact, but it was not usually articulated very clearly in South Africa, and was especially powerful coming from the Chinese, precisely because this is exactly what they did. They revolutionized their economy, they massively increased the size of their industrial base through attracting foreign investment after 1978. 1978 was the year in which uh, the late leader Deng Xiaoping uh, opened the Chinese economy uh, and transformed a totally socialist system into what is effectively a capitalist system, though of course it's officially called socialism with Chinese characteristics. What are some of the other challenges that Africa faces in terms of its industrialization? Well, uh, as one of the Chinese ambassadors pointed out, uh, Africa has got skilled people, but it doesn't have enough of them. And it doesn't have enough capital. And you need people and you need capital uh, in order to develop. Now, you can access some capital from financing agencies like the naturally the Chinese cited Chinese funding mechanisms, the Asian Infrastructure Development Bank, uh, the Silk Road Fund and others. But the main source uh, of attracting capital and skills is foreign investment. Uh, so the continent needs to stimulate foreign investment to, to ensure it gets the adequate capital inflows over and above development finance uh, uh, inflows. As one of the Chinese officials said, you can't develop on aid alone, I'm paraphrasing. Uh, you need investment. And uh, investment will also stimulate the development of uh, local expertise because it's a lot cheaper to be able to recruit local experts to run your uh, subsidiaries than it is to have to transfer them in from other countries. So those are the two critically important things necessary skills and capital and these two will then allow the addressing of the other lack, which is inadequate infrastructure. How will China's One Belt, One Road initiative benefit Africa? That uh, was, of course, highlighted by the Chinese at the conference. Uh, the conference, by the way, was uh, organized by the Africa Institute of South Africa, which is now part of the Human Sciences Research Council in conjunction with the Embassy of the People's Republic of China in Pretoria. And of course, the Chinese did emphasize the importance of the One Belt, One Road, also known as the Belt and Road Initiative, originally phrased as the New Silk Road and then the Maritime Silk Road. To summarize briefly, the original idea was to recreate the famed ancient Silk Road, which had linked ancient China with the ancient Mediterranean through Central and West Asia, uh, but to create a modern version of that using roads and railways and stimulate economic development and go all the way to Europe, not just the, the coast of the Mediterranean. And then the concept of the maritime Silk Road was added, a shipping uh, route uh, counterpart. And since then, the concept's been expanded 
to include regions and countries that are not on the way from China to Europe. And that, of course, includes Africa and the uh, BRI, as it's often abbreviated to, Belt and Road Initiative, uh, has now been officially expanded to include the whole of Africa. Now, this is intended to promote Chinese investment. So, in the Chinese investment and cooperation between the participating countries. So, it increases uh, the chances of further Chinese investment uh, in Africa. Uh, China's already a major investor in Africa, and China has been Africa's main trading partner for the last nine years. So, the hope, the intent is to increase that trade and increase the investment in Africa. And it was pointed out that of the Chinese companies that have invested in Africa, 31% are engaged in uh, manufacturing activities. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.